Welcome everybody to this Cloud Native Computing Foundation webinar, uh, which will be delivered by Ori and I on just-in-time AWS access for Kubernetes workloads anywhere with Search Manager on the rise. A uh, quick bit of intro, I am a technical director at Venify, a machine identities company, and I focus on workload identities. And uh, Venify is a company behind Search Manager as uh, the creators of Search Manager and donated to the CNCF in 2020. I'm here with Ori. Ori, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm the CTO at Otherize. Uh, we build open source software for declaratively managing workload IEM on Kubernetes. Uh, these days, I pretend to be an extroverted CTO doing webinars and such. But before that, I was just an introverted platform engineer. <laughs> so here we go. Thank you, Ori. Yeah, like really looking forward to present this webinar together with you. Um, it's a mouthful title kind of thing, but we're going to try to break this down in easy bite-sized pieces so you can definitely understand this. A bit on our agenda, uh, we're first going to talk a little bit about AWS and Spiffy. Um, we're then going to talk about Cert Manager and the Cert Manager CSI Spiffy driver, um, Authorize. You will see a real live demo and uh, a small recap. Um, first, before actually starting with all of the content, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Joss van Leeuwen and uh, Thomas Meadows, uh, two former uh, Venify colleagues of mine, who last year during KubeCon uh, Europe in Amsterdam uh, did a talk on Cert Manager Can Do Spiffy, uh, solving multi cloud workload identity using a de facto standard tool. Really great talk. I really highly suggest to check this out, maybe even before sometimes watching this webinar, if you're watching this in, in a recording afterwards, uh, they will go really deep into like what Spiffy is and, and how everything is being built up. Uh, while we stay a bit more on the higher level as uh, we want to show some other bits and pieces besides the Spiffy uh, today and how like this can all work together with Authorize. Um, mm -hmm. So a small bit on uh, our honorary guest of today, it's AWS. Uh, so we are going to talk to AWS and we are going to use a service of AWS called I am roles anywhere. Uh, it's a really great feature of uh, AWS and unfortunately none of the other cloud providers kind of have something quite similar. Uh, and what it allows this feature is to authenticate to AWS with an X519 certificate that you have minted yourself with your own tool. Um, you mint your X519 certificate uh, through a CA that you own, you give AWS the uh, public keys of that CA so that there's a, a trust being established. And then you, what you can do is you can exchange that X519 certificate for uh, short-lived access credentials by using the create session um, uh, feature of uh, I am roles anywhere. And it's a very easy feature. And that's what we are going to heavily leverage uh, for uh, this webinar. A small bit of recap as well on Spiffy. Um, Spiffy uh, exists out of multiple components, but for uh, the purpose of this talk, we're going to focus first and foremost on uh, Spiffy identities, which exists out of three components or, or three parts. Uh, first of all, you have the scheme of a Spiffy identity. Um, in Spiffy, that's just Spiffy dot dot slash slash. The second part is uh, the trust domain. And a trust domain is kind of how you can mark your uh, trust boundary, how you can uniquely mark uh, for example, an environment. So uh, when you are an enterprise, you might have different trust domains for, for example, production developments. And uh, these kind of mark your uh, trust boundaries. Spiffy identities are being cryptographically uh, signed in key materials. Uh, the two common key materials uh, that a Spiffy identity can be uh, minted is as an X509 certificate and a JWT token. For the purpose of this talk, we are only going to focus on uh, the X509 bits, but know that like the official uh, Spiffy framework also uh, supports uh, chat tokens. And we're also, a, a big part of that is also the attestation and validation of workloads. Before you can mint a Spiffy identity with an X509 certificate, you first want to uh, validate that that workload is who it says it is. And uh, this can be done through multiple factors. And, and later on this talk, you will see, for example, how Cert Measure can help with uh, this bit. Uh, this is where Cert Manager comes in. Cert Manager is kind of the de facto standard for uh, certificate management on uh, Kubernetes. It's a really great tool to uh, manage the lifecycle of X509 certificates within Kubernetes clusters. Uh, it's part of the CNCF, 
Uh, it's currently in an incubating status, uh, as it has been donated by Vanafine uh, 2020. Uh, but the Circ Manager team is working towards uh, graduation, hopefully later this year. Uh, it has currently more than 11,000 uh, stars uh, on GitHub. And uh, the main use case, I think, like that everybody's aware of, of Circ Manager is using it for uh, securing your uh, ingress uh, resources or your gateway resources. Uh, where cert, uh, cert Manager creates a certificate that then stores uh, your TLS certificate in a secret, in a Kubernetes secret, that then can be used by your ingress gateway um, uh, to be able to secure your web traffic. Uh, Let's Encrypt, for example, was one of the very first implementations of like uh, Cert Manager, uh, and it's still like I think like the most popular used one. At least I use it in my own home cluster. So, <laughs> um, always, deploy, uh, always start with deploying Cert Manager and Let's Encrypt. Yeah, ever faster. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, like it's been used, I think, on nine of, of the 10 clusters that I see. Uh, but there are a bunch of other use cases as well of Cert Manager besides uh, the ingress story. Uh, first and foremost, like it can do an integration with Vistio Service Mesh and um, uh, some other service meshes as well uh, to replace the built in uh, self signed CA. So uh, this is commonly done to improve the security by using external CAs and uh, especially a lot of big enterprises, they have their own uh, CAs that they want to use and, and they don't want to use any self-signed uh, CAs within their production environments. Hence, Cert Manager can take care of this and uh, it can replace that self-signed uh, CA. It also makes it easier to set up multi-cluster. When you set up multi-cluster, you need to start copying like uh, the trust routes uh, between different clusters, this all goes away when you have like that common PKI that you can trust. Uh, another bit that Cert Manager also has is you can build your own MTLS if you want. So uh, this either can be done by creating certificates uh, that then uh, store it in a Kubernetes secret or by using uh, the CSI drivers of Cert Manager to be able to give your workloads just in time certificates where you then can have like your own, uh, create your own MTLS. For example, common one that I've seen is uh, lots of Spring Boot, Java Spring Boot applications that uh, load in uh, Java Trust Stores. Uh, one of the other projects that Cert Manager also has is uh, the Trust Manager. And the Trust Manager is a really great project to get uh, CA root chains, public keys uh, from uh, many different sources, and then give these to your application so that they can uh, trust those. And this is especially great if you are needing to rely on uh, uh, trust stores and, and, and uh, public and CAs kind of thing that are not uh, publicly being uh, uh, distributed. Like for example, indeed, if you have your own PKI in your own company, like this is a great way to um, distribute that towards all of your applications without needing to embed these necessarily inside your container images, but you can then like easily update them without needing to update your container images. And the purpose of this talk as well today is uh, using Spiffy for or issuing Spiffy identities with a uh, cert manager. And, and that, that's where the cert manager CSI driver uh, Spiffy, co <laughs> Spiffy comes <laughs> in. <Yeah. laughs> uh, it runs in, uh, so the way that this CSI driver Spiffy work and kind of like how every CSI driver works first and foremost is it uses the temp tempfs uh, file system on each node. And with that, like the private key material of the certificate that gets generated never leaves that node. It's like in memory and it's only there during the life cycle of your uh, Kubernetes pod and any Kubernetes workload. So from the moment that Kubernetes pod is gone, that key material is also gone because it was in memory and it's never gone. Uh, it uses the CSI token feature request, uh, CSI token request feature of uh, uh, the CSI driver. And uh, what this allows you is to discover the pod identity and it's going to then form the Spiffy identity based on uh, the discovery of that pot identity and embedding that in the X519 certificate signing request. And the CSI token request is also to impersonate the service account so that like uh, you cannot do privilege escalation and uh, it has extra security boundaries. And as this is especially relevant for CSI drivers like the Spiffy one, but also like, uh, for example, when you use this for uh, the CSI secret store drivers for TCP and OIS, like it uses the same features because that's extra security on it. And then the Cert Manager CSI driver Spiffy comes with a second component, which is uh, the approver. And uh, this does some extra checks besides uh, validating the Spiffy identity. It's uh, going to check if the accept acceptable key usages are being set, which is uh, key encipherment, 
uh, digital signature, uh, client off and server off, uh, a request duration which matches the enforced duration. So uh, by default, the spiffy identities are only going to be one, one hour old and it's automatically going to renew those. Uh, that no sense or other identifiable attributes. You can only set a single URI send. And a URI send needs to contain a spiffy identity of the service account, which created a certificate request. And uh, you also have a spiffy ID trust domain matching the one that was configured at startup. So like at startup, and you will see that later in the demo, we give a trust domain as the CSI spiffy driver, like it's going to match that with, uh, uh, and, and then approve it. And then only then, the certificate will get issued by our uh, CA. And now I'm going to take a hand off to Ori, who's going to talk a bit about Authorize. Thank you. Um, so I mentioned earlier that Authorize does declarative IAM uh, for Kubernetes workloads, and we're here to talk about how to do cross-cloud AWS IAM access. Uh, but before we dive into that, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the different Authorize components and uh, roles in this. So. Uh, what is Otherize? Otherize achieves uh, three things with its open source components. The first one is credential provisioning automation. So to gain access, workloads need to be identified and authenticated. On AWS, this happens for an AWS role. On Kubernetes network policies for labels, uh, with databases for usernames and certificates, and all of these different resources need lifecycle management, which the Otherize credentials operator handles. Um, it's an open source project. You just you just label a pod, and Otherize will take care of keeping all the resources and credentials necessary for authentication in sync. Um, and then you have IAM policy automation. Um, that means the creation and lifecycle management of IAM policies, like those on AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, but also the Kubernetes network policies themselves, Istio policies, and even access to databases. This happens in an open source project. Uh, from Otherize called the Intense Operator, a Kubernetes operator that you deploy on your cluster. And finally, we have mapping actual access. Um, so knowing that you have the right policies in place for intentional access to succeed at deploy time can be difficult uh, when you have complicated permissioning systems such as AWS IAM or network policies, uh, where the existence of one policy can affect how another policy behaves. The Otherize Network Mapper, a third open source project, uses existing traffic in your cluster to auto-generate the required declarations for access to succeed, allowing you to compare the declared access with the actual traffic. So let's see how we actually take all of that and put that uh, and, and how that works in, in this specific case. So um, in order to achieve access to AWS IAM, uh, we're going to label a pod to tell the credentials operator that we want it to create an AWS role. The credentials operator will then calculate what should be the pod's spiffy identity um, and create an I AWS IAM role and IAM roles anywhere profile, and then add a CSI volume to the pod, referencing the pod's spiffy identity, the profile, and role. Um, the uh, cert manager CSI driver will then pick that up and create an appropriate X509 certificate and uh, create the temporary credentials that Matthias mentioned earlier, um, which will be able to find all of that inside the CSI volume. So now we've got uh, a pod and it has a role and it has a profile and credentials and it's able to authenticate. The next step is we need to apply client intents. Client intents uh, is, is an authorized custom resource that you apply to your cluster where each client workload declares uh, which access it needs. So once you apply it to your cluster in the same namespace as the pod, the resource tells the intents operator what access our pod needs on AWS. Then the intents operator uses the client intents to create a matching AWS IAM policy and associates it with the IAM role the credentials operator created in the previous step. And then, then once we did both those steps, we have cross-cloud access. So I'll hand it back over to Matthias for us to see a cool demo of all of this in action. Cool, thanks. Uh, so for the purpose of this demo, uh, as like we already know, we're going to connect to uh, AWS. I have uh, set it up a Kubernetes cluster in uh, Google Cloud. You can see this is a GKE cluster. Uh, it runs uh, version 129 of Kubernetes. 
uh, and, and to show I'm not cheating, uh, I actually have opened this up. Uh, it's uh, this cluster uh, that you can see. So there is nothing in AWS running. So we are going from Google Cloud to uh, uh, to AWS. And, and the first thing we need to start with is we need to uh, deploy a CERT manager. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. So this is a simple uh, Helm install uh, that we're going to do of CERT manager. And we are going to add one extra thing besides the normal install of the CRTs. And that is that we're going to disable the default uh, certificate requests approver of uh, the CERT manager install. So when you do a normal install of CERT manager, by default, all certificate requests are getting approved automatically by CERT manager, which is really great behavior. The thing is that our CSI Spiffy driver is going to do its own approver. So we want we don't want to have like two conflicting things approving certificate requests. So we are disabling a uh, cert manager one. Uh, cert manager also has some external certificate requests approver for if you have like for example a combination of multiple issuers later down the line uh, that you can use them together. So that like for example the CSI driver only approves the CSI driver uh, issuers, and then you might have like another certificate request approver for for example like your ingress uh, certificates which might come from another issuer. Uh, the second part that we're going to do is we are going to deploy uh, an issuer and we're going to get a, a CA kind of cert. So uh, in this case, we are going to uh, use a self-signed issuer. Uh, this means that it will self-sign its cert. And, and this is especially great like if you for demo purposes, uh, if you want to have a CA. And you can see like we're going to create a, a CA here. Uh, uh, in the spec, it said CA is true. Um, it's quite long lived. Uh, normally, it would be short lived. And we can also see uh, uh, that we have set the common name to uh, spiffy.certmanager.io, uh, which is also going to be our trust domain. And uh, we're going to get this signed by the self signed one. And then uh, later down the line, we're going to create another cluster issuer that will contain uh, the secret of that uh, CA. Uh, you can see this match with like the, the secret name of the certificate that we're going to request. And uh, that's then what we're going to use to issue. Uh, spiffy identities later down the line. So I'm now going to apply this. And uh, because I have disabled the automatic approver of uh, certificates, I now, for only this kind of CA, I need to manually approve them. Uh, luckily, with the uh, CMCTL tool, which is the Cert Manager CTL tool, I can approve this manually. And uh, I'm going to do this now. And what we're going to see now is uh, certificates, all namespaces. Uh, we have our certificate ready and it's all up and running. Woo! So that's the first part done. We have cert manager running, we have a CA in our cluster. Now we can set up uh, the CSI Spiffy driver. And for this, I have prepared a small uh, YAML file, which will be our values.yaml file that we have give to Helm. Uh, you can see our trust domain is being set here. We also uh, refer to that issuer that we have created earlier. And also for our approver bit, we also need to uh, reference the same uh, issuer there. I also need to make a small change in uh, the images that we're using uh, because like currently the AWS features are not part of the upstream uh, cert manager CSI Spiffy store driver. I need to uh, reference this currently to uh, a second one. I'm currently working on trying to see how we can get this into upstream as well. Uh, but like what this will do is uh, when um, a, a pod comes up with the CSI driver spiffy one, it will automatically exchange that X509 certificate that it gets just in time for access tokens uh, that then can be used to authenticate to AWS. So that's the main difference. It has like that create session that I was talking about earlier uh, inside the CSI spiffy driver. So you don't need any extra helpers. Like from the moment your pod is there, the credentials for AWS authentication are going to be there. And they will also automatically be refreshed by the CSI Spiffy, store, uh, Spiffy driver, which is uh, really great. So I'm going to, uh, is, uh, da -da, where is it? Yes, this one, I need to find a command. Uh, so I'm going to do Helm upgrade and do the Spiffy uh, driver install. Uh, this is pulling it. And what we're going to see is that our uh, Spiffy driver is going to come up. So we have the approver one. So that's going to be the one that's uh, going to approve the certificate request later down the line. And then you can see like we have three pods with the CSI driver Spiffy. This is because my cluster exists out of three nodes and we need to have like one pod per node to be able to work as a daemon set. As I said, like the CSI driver handles everything in TempFS and in memory. 
So that's why we need to have like that daemon set up and running. And then we're going to do the AWS bit, sorry. Yep. So um, we're about to deploy Otherize. And uh, before we do that, we need to do some setup on AWS so that Otherize can go and uh, do all the things that I described earlier, create IAM roles, IAM roles anywhere, pro anywhere profiles um, and policies. Um, another thing that the Terraform uh, template will do is it's going to retrieve the public key of the, C of the self signed CA uh, we created before and define it as a trust anchor for IAM roles anywhere, as well as configure the IAM policies and roles for the authorized credentials and intense operator themselves which will be running on our Google Cloud cluster. Um, so go ahead and, and deploy it. Yeah, and it's, okay. it's deployed. Yeah. And we, what we are going to be able to see is when I do a refresh here, uh, we can see this is the authorized cert manager PIFI. So the trust anchor is now in I am anywhere. Uh, we also have uh, two profiles in here uh, set it up. Uh, and uh, this references the authorized intense operator role that's then like has the I am in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also has a trust relationship in there. Maybe you can talk a bit more about that, Tori. Yep. So the, the trust relationship we see here is actually, as you can see, it has the uh, spiffy uh, URI for the intense operator. So you can see it's the trust domain we set up earlier in the namespace authorized system, which is where authorized is going to be deployed on our Google Cloud cluster. And then the service account, the intense operator controller manager. And below that, in the AWS source ARN, you can see the uh, ARN for the, um, trust the, roles anywhere, the roles anywhere trust anchor. Yeah. Yep. And this is going to enable the intense operator and the credentials operator to uh, set up things for the rest of the pods on the cluster. OK, so now that we have all of that set up, we're ready to go ahead and deploy Otherize and tell it um, what, are the, what are the role ARNs, the profile ARNs, and all of the different details uh, that we need for this to work. So uh, you, you need to pass some flags here. Uh, we're, we seem to be in the home directory, but while uh, Matthias is seeding, I'll tell you a bit about the flags. So we need to turn on AWS. We need to tell it which AWS region to default to when it's creating roles and policies. Uh, since we're not on AWS, it can't auto detect that. And then we need to give it the role ARN for the intense operator, credentials operator, and tell it that we're in roles anywhere mode, what the trust domain is, what the trust anchor ARN is, um, and the trust profile for both the intense operator and credentials operator, uh, which we all just created with Terraform. So next step is uh, we're going to see the actual demo. We've completed the setup. Um, and now we, uh, we are going to see a demo where we have a client and server who are communicating uh, locally within that cluster. And the client is sending requests uh, to a server. And uh, that server is trying to uh, submit files to S3. So before we, uh, we deploy the client and server, uh, maybe let's uh, look at the S3 bucket and see that there are no files in it. Because it's, uh, it's a magic trick. Before you do the magic trick, you got to show the, the audience, you know, there's nothing in here. <laughs> it's completely empty. Uh, <laughs> and and it's, uh, yeah, like totally empty. So that, that's, that's really great. Uh, so like now we can start deploying it. <laughs> yep. And now we're going to deploy the client and server. Now, the client is periodically sending a request to the server, asking it to upload a file to S3. Um, and the server right now is actually going to be failing to do that because it doesn't have access to the S3 bucket. Now, if we look at the logs for the server and we wait a bit longer, then we should start to see errors from AWS. We're waiting for the internet to vacuum the container out of Docker Hub, but it's going to arrive. Probably the client is still loading. Elevator music. Yeah. <laughs> it take, okay. I, I noticed that it could have taken some time. Uh, authorize tutorial. Let's see. Yeah. It's okay. running. So. Let's do the logs again. It's not a good demo if it doesn't have technical problems. Uh -huh. There it is. So, <laughs> so it took a bit long, longer than usual. Uh, but what you can see here in the in the error is that the 
um, server is failing to upload a file because it's trying to do an S3 put object operation. Um, and it's not able to re retrieve credentials or refresh credentials. This is basically the AWS Go SDK trying all the different methods in, it knows in order to get credentials, and they're all failing because it's on Google Cloud. How would it work? So uh, what we now need to do is uh, we need to label our pod. Um, Before that, we need to do something else. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, for, uh, for the SPF CSI driver to work, we actually need to, uh, uh, for our server, give it uh, the ability to create a certificate request, which the SPF CSI driver will do on its behalf. Yeah. And, uh, so and, and that has to do with the token request functionality I was talking about earlier, where the CSI driver is going to impersonate the server's account of uh, its subject, in this case, the server. And it's then going to, on behalf of that server, of, of that subject, it's going to do a certificate request to get like certificate issued. So it needs to be able to create those certificate uh, objects in, in Kubernetes, of course. Yep. If we don't do this, then the pod will uh, fail to start because the CSI driver will not be able to do the certificate request. So we now have the RBAC. And uh, um, now we're going to patch our pod. Uh, and we're going to do two things. First, we're going to do the AWS row label. Um, Authorized to tell the credentials operator that, hi, I'm this pod, please create an AWS role and all matching resources for me. And then the environment variable AWS region to tell the pod which region it should work in, um, since it can tell because it's running on Google Cloud. Yeah. And, and so to show this is all going to work quite neatly, the magic trick we were talking about earlier, uh, it will automatically create uh, uh, an IAM role with, uh, that starts with OTR. You can see currently this is completely empty in uh, my AWS environment. So, uh, and like when we do the patch of this one, it will automatically create this one. So, so what's happening behind the scenes? We're, we're about to see the, what happened to the pod in a moment. But we already can see the role that was created here. And it still doesn't have any policies, but maybe show the trust relationship. Yep, and you can see that we have the principal from uh, from before, the service account, namespace, authorized tutorial I am, service account is server, and the source ARN is the trust anchor. Yeah. Uh, this was set up automatically just because we labeled that pod. Yeah, and this is just by labeling inside Kubernetes, it's all like happening through authorized, nothing through Terraform or, or anything else, which is really neat until now. And then the last bit, I guess. Yep, so uh, maybe before that, let's look at the pods declaration to see what the credentials operator did. So can we uh, describe the pod? Uh, yep. <laughs> Authorize tutorial. I can't, I stopped being able to type when I'm live screen sharing. <laughs> Okay, so we see the, sorry, can you give me just one moment? Sorry about that. Of course, during the webinar is when uh, somebody decides to renovate right outside the office and make tons of noise. <laughs> that happens. Uh, just trying to, to make it a bit quieter, hopefully I succeeded. Okay, so we're, we've described uh, the pod. Um, and uh, what we can see is we have our label and under annotations, uh, we can see that uh, the credentials operator annotated with the role that it created. Um, and if we uh, scroll down to the volume mounts, um, we can see that it uh, created a spiffy volume with a CSI driver. And in the volume attributes, it uh, placed the role ARN, the trust anchor ARN, and the trust profile. The role and the trust profile were created especially for this pod or this service account rather. Um, and if this pod, if all pods using the service account or the service account itself is removed, then the role will also be removed. Um, so the Kubernetes, the state of the Kubernetes cluster and what's on AWS is kept in sync and everything is provisioned just in time. So now this pod uh, has a role, it's authenticated, but it can't do anything yet because it doesn't have any policies attached to its role. Uh, so now we're gonna apply the client intense CRD resource. 
Um, what this is saying is that the service called server wants to call this S3 bucket under this pattern, and it wants the S3 put object uh, action. Um, once we apply this to the cluster, the intense operator is going to go and create an IAM policy and attach it to the role. Let's see it in action. Let's have a look over on AWS to see the magic click materialize. And we have a policy, exactly what we asked for. So to sum up, what did we have to do in order for all of this to happen? Label the pod, get a client intent. Now let's see if it actually works. Oh my God. For those of you not well versed in JSON, uh, there's a field called status. It says 200, which means we are no longer getting errors. Um, so if we check our S3 bucket now, the magic trick should be complete. Yep, we have oh files. <laughs> Matthias, did you do that while I was away or was it, uh, is the, did the demo work? <laughs> yeah, the demo worked, the demo worked. And like one of the nice things as well is like authorize not only sets up like the, the IAM policy and uh, the role for it, it also does like also automatically the IAM anywhere policy, which is a specific one you can see here. It has created this in the background, which then refers to the role uh, that we were showing earlier. So like everything is handled by uh, authorizing the background. So you can really declare your uh, access to it was resources through your Kubernetes cluster, and there is actually no need to manually do this in AWS or need to do this through uh, any other uh, infrastructure as code tooling. Like it's all natively in Kubernetes, which is really nice. And multi cloud, because this works from Google Cloud uh, natively. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this really simplifies uh, handling the, the life cycle of all of these resources because. You don't need to think, OK, if I do a Helm rollback, do I also need to roll back my Terraform? No, you just do your Helm rollback. The resource goes to the previous state. The operators take care of syncing AWS to that. And you always know your source of truth is Kubernetes. Cool. So, Perfect. That was the demo time. Uh, it all worked from the first try. I'm so happy that the demo gods were with us today. Uh, so a bit too for closing of, of this webinar. Uh, first of all, like uh, both Authorize and Cert Manager are uh, two open source projects. Uh, and we're always looking for extra contributors uh, towards uh, both of these projects. So the Cert Manager project can be found on uh, its own Cert Manager organization. And uh, the main project is on the Cert Manager in there. But we have a bunch of other projects, as I was talking about, for a bunch of different functionality, like uh, coupling with Vistio, uh, having CSI drivers, the trust manager is in there. So like, uh, yeah, we have a quite great ecosystem already with like lots of contributors from different companies, but we always uh, want to expand this and uh, yeah, like get feedback as well on Cert Manager. You can also find us on the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, we have a Cert Manager channel in there where uh, you can ping us. Uh, maybe Ori, you can give a bit of information on uh, Authorize and how they can contribute there. So Otherize isn't yet as popular as Cert Manager. We're not yet deployed on 90% of clusters, but we'll be there. <laughs> so uh, you're more than welcome to check out any of these repositories. Um, they do, most of the time, it, it makes most sense to deploy them all in one go. So they come uh, in one Helm chart that bundles them together. Um, but they can also be used standalone. Um, and uh, we have a community Slack that you're welcome to pop on to and uh, ask questions, ask like, what's the, the best uh, issue to get started with if you're interested in contributing. And yeah, come uh, be an extroverted, introverted uh, platform engineer with me. Yeah, and automate <laughs> your whole environment through Cert Manager and Authorize for access. Yes. Cool. Uh, to, to recap and, and to uh, like shortly recap what we have uh, seen today. First of all, Cert Manager can do spiffy identities and it can mint you a spiffy identity Enix 509 certificate. Uh, thanks to uh, the great coupling of the CSI driver spiffy, which currently is not yet in upstream, but like it's open source already. Uh, uh, you can uh, use spiffy identities to work with uh, AWS IAM roles anywhere. And then the authorized bit, sorry. So once you have that, Otherize creates a matching AWS IAM roles, uh, profiles, and policies. And 
put it all together and workloads can get access to AWS no matter where they run. On another cloud provider, your grandmother's laptop um, or bare metal. <laughs> as long as it runs Kubernetes, we are covered yes. and uh, it works. And, and that's a really great thing. Like uh, we showed this today from uh, a cool cloud cluster, but this could have been an Azure cluster or like indeed a bare metal cluster that you uh, have set it up yourself with Cupidium, for example. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, to present together with you, Ori. Uh, you can, uh, we are always looking for new use cases and, and new things to do. Also, if you have questions, uh, feel, please feel, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can email me directly on the email address you see on the presentation, but you can also reach out to me uh, on uh, Twitter or what we now call X uh, with my full name uh, or on LinkedIn as well or any other source you can probably find me on. Uh, yeah, uh, Ori, maybe some closing thoughts? For sure, closing arguments. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to be here with you, Matthias. It's actually my first webinar ever. So it was awesome. The demo worked. Yeah. A little bit of renovation on the side, but <laughs> we handled it. Um, and yeah, feel free to email me, reach out to me on Slack. Uh, just ask for a favor. I do those too. <laughs> um, and yeah, try it out. Let us know what you think. Um, we're really curious to see how people use this. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. And uh, yeah, we are also going to open source. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to open up the instructions to re fully replicate this demo, by the way. This will be on the authorized uh, uh, GitHub uh, organization where you can uh, go check them out and, and run it yourself because all of this, what we have showed today is fully open source. It uses start manager and authorizing the open source components. So like you can fully replicate this in your own environment and even start using it. Yep, and it's gonna. You you can even pretend you're running the webinar and just go through all the steps. Yep. <laughs> if you want the full experience, Indeed. I'm just here to inject you more. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a nice day for everybody uh, listening to this uh, webinar, and uh, hope you learned something. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.